Hello and welcome to the Ask Me Anything video that I just impromptly decided to do after we hit a thousand students which was just last weekend we already have over 2,000 students so I want to start off by saying absolutely thank you thank you so much for being part of this course it is beyond what I expected I thought I'll get a couple of you know hundred and call it a success but I've really really loved interacting with a lot of you we have students from over a hundred countries and everybody's so excited to learn um, with so many different backgrounds and I just love the community that has come out of it like I said, it was beyond my expectation and I love that everybody's so excited about learning to code. So thank you so much. You know, I've created a couple of videos for you to watch, but I think the community that's forming around it, that's supporting each other, and hopefully in a few months, helping each other to become the web developers that they want to be, I think that's the most amazing part. So again, thank you so much. I'm just going to answer a few questions that some of you have asked to celebrate getting to a thousand students. Uh, the first one that I see over here is from Ashley and she asked, what was your biggest hurdle after learning starting a new career field? I think the biggest hurdle that I encountered was uh, definitely the imposter syndrome. You may have heard of it. It's the idea that you feel like an imposter. You feel like everybody else knows this stuff except you. You sit in a room and people start talking and you realize that you have no clue what's going on and you're afraid to ask questions. And I think that's the biggest hurdle. Realizing that when you read something or watch videos online, People have practiced this and made sure that there's no mistakes in their writing and their videos and I did this as well. And what this means is that what we project onto our videos or onto our blog posts isn't exactly us being perfect, it's us iterating and making sure that we check our mistakes and fix them. So nobody out there knows every single answer about web development or coding. We all are beginners and we are problem solvers. We're really really good at solving problems not just dictionaries that know everything. So really realize that you're not an imposter, you're not less than everybody else. Everybody has these difficulties and I think the biggest thing you can do as a developer is ask a lot of questions. Anytime you don't know something ask questions. Don't feel like you don't you're the only one that doesn't know. Most likely other people in the room don't know except they are afraid to ask a question and raise their hand. So I think that's the biggest hurdle. You get over that and you get comfortable asking questions to your coworkers when you don't understand something. I did that a lot when I first started uh, coding and I was able to get answers and progress a lot faster than most people that didn't ask questions. All right, so uh, next question was from uh, Mike. Um, other than JavaScript, what is the most important language to learn? I have to say probably, other than JavaScript, uh, Python is a really good language to learn, uh, mostly because it's used a lot in machine learning. And it's a very, very fast growing field. And I'm gonna write a little bit of a blog post on it uh, so people can get familiar with it. But Python is definitely interesting. Um, the other one I would say is Solidity, which is the coding language that is used in building distributed applications for Ethereum. Uh, if you haven't heard about blockchain and all the hype with cryptocurrency, I think Solidity is a really interesting one. In 2018, we're going to see a lot of uh, distributed applications being created and there's a huge demand for developers who know that language. So I think those two are pretty, pretty exciting. I'll be writing a blog post about it so you can get more information. Um, but yeah, you should uh, look into those as well as JavaScript. But focus on JavaScript first. All right, uh, next question was by Wasim. And he asked, uh, if you were to hire a React developer from students who completed this course, what would be, what do you, I can't read today. What would you be looking for and what questions would you ask? All right, um, so I think I would ask, Number one, what's the benefit of React? Are they, did they just learn a couple of syntaxes and know React or do they actually know what problems React solves? And I go over that in the course, so hopefully you understand it as well. Um, and then I'll also ask about what are its shortcomings? When is it a bad time to use React? Because I've seen a lot of people who get really, really excited about to the technology and think it's the greatest gift ever without understanding that not every 
problem can be solved by one library. I think React is great for some things, but not for everything. And there are a lot of shortcomings that come with React that you should know as well because if you're able to understand the pros and cons, well, I think then you truly understand the library and you're able to make a good decision as a developer. And it's something that I tried to do in this course, which is not necessarily learn a bunch of functions and ways to do things, but deeply understand them. Know what problems they solve and when they're good to use. And if you deeply understand that, then I would 100% hire somebody because I know that they have deep knowledge about something and not something superficial, which in turn means that they're able to do more than just follow instructions. They're able to think on their own and doesn't just follow the rules and follow what I say, but can think for themselves and make good decisions. All right, uh, next one by Josh. Uh, which programming blogs do you read most frequently? Um, I definitely like Medium. Medium is great for technical blog posts. Um, if you haven't been there before, just medium.com and just follow anything Actually, I would say just follow the top 10 articles daily and see, browse through them and see which ones are related to technology. I think they're really, really good. It's actually how I started this course. I wrote a Medium blog post that became very popular and I thought, hey, maybe I should create a course. Uh, the other one is Software Engineering Daily and that's a podcast that is really, really good. And it's not just about web development, it's just about software engineering in general. And it can get very technical at times, but it really gives you a good grasp of what's out there and the technology as it evolves. And then finally, uh, for JavaScript, there is a JavaScript weekly newsletter. You can Google that and sign up for it. And every week, it'll give you updates on JavaScript. Okay, a few more questions we have. What did you do prior to your career change? Um, so I've actually had a, an interesting uh, career, I guess. I used to train tour directors around the world. So I'd fly to Costa Rica, for example, and uh, train people. I also had a small business that um, I actually used to run yoga and surf retreats. So I've always worked with people and every once in a while I would need a website made. And I would give a bunch of money to a developer and never know what was happening behind the scenes. The finished product would never come as I wanted it. And it was kind of this black hole that I was throwing money into. So I wanted to learn it for myself and that's kind of how I got into the field. And next thing you know, um, I really, really enjoyed it and decided to make the career move based on the fact that A, it's a great industry to be in and that I found it interesting. The next question was, how did you get your first job as a dev? Um, so I actually got my job as a developer five months after well, after starting with HTML, I didn't know what HTML, CSS, JavaScript, any of that stuff was. I didn't really know how the internet worked. Uh, five months later, I got a job, uh, and not even as a junior developer, but as an intermediate developer. And that's nothing to show off, uh, but just to show you how fast you can progress through this career um, if you really work for it and understand the fundamentals. So the first job that I got, I actually applied by messaging a bunch of companies that I was interested in and finding their email, their CEO's email, and letting them know that I was interested in a role and that I was solving a specific problem that they had. So I would research a company and say, hey, I noticed that you know your website or your app could have this and this fixed, this is how I would do it. Or I would message a CEO and be like, hey, these are my past um, past achievements. I've recently turned into a developer and I guarantee you I will work twice as hard as anybody else on the team and just kind of make a grand promise, I guess, in order to really catch your attention. So another question was, and how did the interview go? I actually had multiple offers when I first got my developer role and I think I was able to get those offers not because I was the best developer in the world and by no means am I that now but I think in the interview what I was able to do was to convince them that I will work harder than everybody else and I made sure to do that by showcasing that a, I come from a different background. I'm not a computer programmer that graduated with a 
uh, with a degree and I turn that actually into an advantage by telling them all the other things that I've done beforehand and then finally showing them that I was a self-taught programmer just like yourselves and showing that I had the ambition and determination so that by the end of the interview I was able to convince them that although I may not be the most skilled developer out there I'd be the hardest working and I would make sure that I would learn these things so that I'd become a really really valuable employee in six months and I think if you're able to do that you'll be surprised how many more offers you'll get because there are a lot of developers out there but it's really really hard to find developers who a can have can follow instructions b can work hard and c aren't so confident in their abilities that they have a narrow vision and are don't take others inputs so if you're able to convince somebody that you're going to help them out you're going to work really really hard and that you're going to be an asset to them that will make their life easier i think that is a great great way to land a job all right next question from uh, wan is uh, three books that have inspired you in some way and i've chosen non-coding related books just because i think the coding related books um, all the popular ones everybody knows or you can google them around but the three books that have really inspired me one is the four hour work week that by tim ferris that some of you may have heard of it's a very popular book i i don't like the actual content tips and tricks but i really like the way that uh, tim thinks and he thinks in efficiency and I i'm obsessed with using our limited time to the most efficient degree possible so that means what is the best way for me to learn a topic and not waste my time what is the best way for me to learn something and get rewards as soon as possible and i'm sure you can notice in this course that's what i did i wanted to find the most efficient way possible to start earning money as fast as we can and start working in teams as soon as we can because well we have limited time and we're able to learn a lot more when we're surrounded by others when we're working in development teams so that book not just in developing has really influenced my life to make sure that i think critically about what i do to grow in career personally uh, financially emotionally just everything to try and look at everything and now analyze things um, the second book was the uh, so good they can't ignore you and uh, this book is by cal newport and it's a book that I read and it changed my thinking completely once again and it taught the idea that passion isn't really a thing when we're young we we think that you know we're passionate about traveling we're passionate about I don't know surfing and we try and follow this passion but this book argues that passion actually develops from mastery from becoming really really good at a skill where people start paying you money for it where you become respected in your field and people have admiration for you and when you become really really good and master at your craft well that's when you become content with your life that's when you feel like you're providing value to people and that book has really really shaped the last couple of years for me um, it's why i've I've really gotten into coding and I've really started to enjoy it more and more it's because I've become better and better at it so I highly recommend that book finally the third book is smart cuts by Shane Snow um, and this is a book that I recommend to everybody taking the course especially those that don't come from a computer science background it talks about how you can actually climb the ladder of success not by just you know following the traditional path by but by jumping from side to side from if for example you're you were an actor and now you want to become a developer well this book argues that that's actually better because you're able to use whatever you learn into that field and jump on this other ladder of developing and use those skills that no other person has such as communicating well with people and being empathetical and mimicking body language from each other that's something that you know not a lot of developers know so using those side skills to your advantage you can definitely check out the book it's really really good highly recommend it 
All right, uh, next question, uh, your opinion on the blockchain technology. Very, very cool stuff. I'm actually um, really interested in it and I'm writing a blog post on it. I think everybody should learn the blockchain data structure. You can actually do it in JavaScript and build this simple one quite easily in a day. And I think it's very, very exciting. I think there's a lot of hype around it. I wouldn't recommend investing in it. Um, but, you know, to each your own, I think the technology is actually very interesting and there will be big changes in, in 2018 and the field will grow really, really fast. All right, uh, this is getting long, so last two questions. Um, we have, uh, what is the meaning of life? Um, I'm probably the worst person to ask that to. I have no idea, but I, I can't tell you one thing that um, I live my life by and I heard it somewhere. I wish I could credit the person that I heard it from. Provide more value than you capture and I think that's really interesting um, and this is what I did try to do with the course I tried to provide a lot of value as much as I could and you know there are times that it really really sucked um, making this course because it took a lot of hours a lot of editing and a lot of times where I didn't like the video so I had to redo it over but I wanted to provide something really valuable and just capture a little bit of the benefit. And I, I like this way of thinking. I like this idea of providing out as much value and not necessarily capturing it and getting upset if, you know, your course gets copied and torrented and people download it for free. If you're able to help a bunch of people, that's great. If you're able to capture a bit of the benefit, that's great as well. But I think that's a really nice way of looking at things and if we all strive to do that as web developers to prov to capture a little bit of the value that we provide to the world I think uh, the world would be a better better place all right Whew. Uh, last question how many messages do you get every day from your students I mean um, well this number has definitely increased um, you know I'm very very excited about it I can't believe that we have over 2,000 students now and I definitely spend a lot of time I wish I kept track of things but you know I wake up in the morning I spend about an hour answering messages then in the afternoon I spend another hour or two answering messages and questions and again at night I do that as well and if I don't do that three times a day um, I won't be able to keep up with it. I'll have to figure out a better system to it because I do want to answer each student and I want to I want people to feel comfortable asking me as many questions as they can, but I do also want to continue providing new videos and evolving the course to be better and better based on feedback. So um, we'll see. It's been it's been so much fun right now and so exciting that, uh, as some of you know, I've quit my job to focus on this course full time. So all the feedback, all the community, and everybody that's. Um, that's helping me out on Slack, answering questions and uh, trying to form open source projects. It's been really, really fun. And this is probably the most fun I've had working in my life. And uh, for that, I really, really thank you. I think you're all amazing. And I think what I provide to you is perhaps 20% of the value. I think the community and the support that we're creating with this course is the big benefit. And I hope it keeps growing and I hope it becomes something bigger than I ever envisioned. And I hope all of you by the end of this get what you want out of it, whether to improve your skills, to get a job, or just to get a little bit smarter. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching my face talk for, I don't know how long this video is, but it felt really, really long. I really, really appreciate all of you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.